See, what you're not gonna do is get an attitude when I ask you a question. You getting in my car. If that's the case, you can get your fat ass out and walk. What's good y'all boys, it's Nuna the Don and today I am back with another scary story reaction video. Everything that we're going to be watching is down in the description box below. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Also share the video. Don't be stingy. Don't do that. And with that being said, let's get right into it. Uber nightmare. It was another night on the job. Not that I like nights on the job, but my rent was due in a week and I already spent the money I had on new tires and an oil change for my car. I knew that was no excuse for my landlord, who told me last month, if you're late on your rent again, I'll make sure you're gone. Yeah, she wasn't big on leniency. In any case, I've spent every night chauffeuring around kids, workaholics, and drunks for the abysmal wage who- They all look a hot mess. I couldn't mm -mm. be kicked out onto the streets. It's not like I had family around since I moved to this quiet coastal town a few months ago. I haven't really made any friends here either. So, into the night, I drove. I hated driving around at night. It gave me the creeps. Because it was close to the water, there was always this ominous dew that blanketed the sky. Imagine that drive down a foggy bridge. You know, the one where you didn't dare look back through the rearview mirror. Anyway, I just dropped up Ooh, this her legs long as hell. bar. When my next picked up ping my phone, I thought to myself, that was fast. But it was late. Probably just another person leaving the bar as the last call I'd surely passed. As I drove to pick up my next passenger. I noticed that this person is exactly where I picked up the couple a uh, half hour earlier. And this Why the hell you got me doubling back? You could have hopped your big ass in the car. Doing all this extra stuff. Got me burning up gas. Um, it didn't strike me as too strange. It was more of just a weird coincidence. I shrugged it off rather quickly. As I approached, I didn't see anybody. And there seemed to be an extra layer of fog. I honked and looked to see if anybody was walking up. But... I didn't see anything. I averted my eyes to my phone to double check the pickup location. No, I was in the right. The rear driver door suddenly opens. My heart was definitely close to leaving. Bitch, I snatch open my door like that. Hell wrong with you. You done lost your mind. Got of my chest. Uh, <clears throat> hello there. You scared the hell out of me. I laughed. I was even a little embarrassed. It was a heavyset guy who didn't say anything. His big ass probably flops down in the car too. Back at him briefly. He was clutching a brown paper bag. He put it beside him, keeping it close. Then he looked at me with a blank stare. Mm -mm. Turned back around quickly. Mm -mm. It says you want to be dropped off just a block mm -mm. away. Was there a mistake? I mean, no problem. Uh, I just want to make sure it wasn't a mistake. Finally, the guy spoke. His voice was low and harsh. Must be a mistake. You didn't get the hell out. Was he going to say something else? Did I not hear something he said? I'm with the couple that you just picked up. Oh, really? I asked instinctively. They wanted to ride separately, he said matter-of-factly. Then I remembered that the couple was making out, and they were surely drunk. So I guess it did make sense for them to ride alone. Still, it just seemed so strange. So I'm taking you to the same place I took them then, I asked. He just grunted. <sighs> I felt like See, what you're not gonna do is get an attitude when I ask you a question. You getting in my car. If that's the case, you can get your fat ass out and walk. You're not about to have an attitude when I'm asking you a question. Sir, please. Something was off, but I have to admit, I was too freaked out to question. He him. doing too much. I don't like so him. I put their address in, put the car in gear, and drove off. Every so often, I glanced at the brown paper bag the guy had next to him. I didn't want to be obvious, but I wondered if there was maybe a beer in the bag, maybe some snacks. I even began to wonder if there was a weapon of some sort inside. Maybe I was just being paranoid. Then my phone sounded and I almost jumped. I had a notification from Uber that there was someone else that wanted to be picked up along the way. That was weird since it was already past 3 in the morning. It didn't bother me though. I was just relieved to have someone else join us. I started getting more and more on edge with this strange guy sitting behind me. We got to the location of the other passenger. She was standing under a streetlight. Easy to find this time. Already an upgrade from my last pickup. This girl was bundled up quite a bit, so it was hard to get a good This is cockeyed. She slowly jogged up to the passenger side of my car, which I'd usually advise the person to sit in the back. But given this guy back there, 
I decided to not put her in that situation. She opened the door and got in quickly. Hello, late night. Huh. She looked at me There's something wrong with her eyes. Ice cold. It was unnerving. She smiled and looked out ahead. I brushed it off and looked to see where she was being dropped off at. It was the same address the couple was dropped off at. The same address I was taking this guy. I I looked at her and asked, So, you all know each other? She looked back at the guy and then smiled. She then looked at me and said confidently, Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I swallowed the spit Mm -mm. that had been welling up in my mouth and shut up for the They moving funny. I was sure something was wrong. Hell yeah. But there was nothing I could do at this point. My best bet was to just drop them off and go home. Quick. We were just minutes away. Then all this would be over. As we pulled up to the address, I noticed all the lights were off. Great. The guy got out first and began walking towards the house. Then the girl got out. Before she closed the door, she looked back and said, You just have to wait a minute. We're dropping off something they forgot. No. We'll be right back. No. She smiled and waited to hear how I was going to respond. Absolutely not. Because your ride said that you was getting dropped off here. It never said you was adding a trip to go somewhere else. No, I'm gone. I, I didn't did my trip. I didn't drop you off. I didn't got my money. Everything else is irrelevant. No, I'm gone. Bye. Absolutely not. Uh, yeah, of course. Why would you say yeah? Why the hell did I say that? Why? I want to know the door why. And went to follow the guy. I looked on at them. It was so. It don't take both y'all to get out to drop something off. He could have had it, and he could have dropped it off. That's how you know what's something up with them. Why both of y'all gotta get out the car for y'all to drop something off? Hell no. Dark. I even lost sight of them. Then I looked ahead and sat. You need to pull off. Minutes. Should I just leave? Yes, why is that a question? Myself. Before I could even entertain the thought, the girl's hand slammed on the passenger no, window. No, She opened the door and exclaimed, Please, hurry quick. My friend needs help. Not my, my problem. Dropped. Not my problem. I knew something bad was happening. Something just didn't feel right. I sat there frozen. Hurry, there's blood. No. I need your help to get her to the hospital. Lady, that's what the cops are there for. That's not my job. I'm an Uber driver. Whatever you got going on with you and your friend, she bleeding, that's her problem, that's your problem, and ain't got nothing to do with me. I would have mushed her and kept it pushing. Not my problem. She continued. I tried to push the fear his out of the back of my get mind. Out. Got out of the car to follow her. I followed closely as we neared the front door. When we got just inside the door, I stopped and was going to make a run for it back to my car. But the door slammed it's too late to run. Out. The guy was standing there and shoved me that's to the That's what you get. That's what he you get. He had a blood-soaked knife in his hands. The girl slowly turned to me and told me to run, all laughing maniacally. Still, on the grounds, I crawled as fast as I could to the next room. It was the house's dining room. I couldn't believe my eyes. The couple I had driven home about an hour ago were sitting at they the table. They didn't got murked. You next, sat buddy. Dead, with multiple stab wounds. As I continued to crawl, my hands and knees became soaked with their blood. I tried to cry out, but my shock would not let me. The guy was behind me now, though I couldn't see the girl. I stood up and tried to see if I could make it to the staircase in the next room, he built audibly screaming terrible. at this point. I darted. I could feel the guy dart after me. I glanced back and by a stroke of luck saw the guy slip on their blood. I ran even faster up the stairs. The girl's voice started laughing again, but this time from somewhere I couldn't see. One of the upstairs bedroom's door was open, so I jumped in and shoved myself in the closet. Hope. Everybody know you hiding and somebody looking for you. The first places that you look is under the bed and in the closet. He did not put any thought into where he hid at. Whose mans is this? Please tell me. Somebody come get they mans. I was terrified. I cried into my hands, smearing blood across my hair and face. I was a dead man. We all knew it. I couldn't hear anything at first. Then there were loud. Heavy footsteps coming up the stairs. I tried to quiet my sobs, as if that was going to do anything. It was only a matter of time. Police sirens filled my ears. The neighbors must have heard it and called it in. Those footsteps coming up began rushing back down the stairs and out a door. When I was sure the coast was clear, I stepped out of the closet and fell to my knees. All of the sirens were stationary now. It was clear the police were about to storm in. I was saved. Somehow, I became the survivor of the worst Uber ride of my life. I never did catch those two maniacs, however. And since that night, four other couples have turned up dead. Mm-mm-mm. I ain't got nothing to say about him. 
I got nothing to say. Next video. I hardly like to remember the first and last time I ever took an Uber, as it was a fairly traumatic experience. I had just finished an 11 hour shift and I hadn't hardly gotten any sleep the night before. Mm -mm. Even if I had a vehicle at that time, I'm not sure I would have chosen to drive myself home just because of my level of exhaustion. Usually I took a taxi home, but either the ones that drove past me that day didn't want to drive me or they were all taken. Ooh. So I chose to use Uber since my friends both raved so hard about it, practically preaching as if it was their own personal religion. Well, in every good few experiences there's a bad one. And this is where mine begins. Once my Uber arrived, I noticed it had no back license plate. But I didn't think much about it because to be quite honest, I was a blink away from passing out onto the pavement. So of course, I didn't think anything on it. So just because you're tired, you don't care about your safety? That don't, that don't even make sense. And you didn't get a picture of what the car looked like on your phone when you requested the ride? He's a dummy. The moment I sat in the vehicle, I noticed how clean and impeccable everything was, especially compared to most of the taxis I had taken in my life. Another thing I noticed was how- I don't care how tired you is, you can't fumble like that. Cause you getting into a car that ain't got no plate on it. What you gonna do if you get kidnapped? It ain't even no license plate so a person can be like, yo, the license plate was uh 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 uh. You done. And you're a dummy for that. The man in the front seat never so much as took a glance in my direction. He's not even looking at you. He just sat there for a minute in complete and utter silence, unmoving. After that minute, I began to think that I had somehow gotten into the wrong vehicle. It's too late for that. He ain't letting but you back I did, out. The car started moving, so I relaxed. And he probably got the child lock on. You're done, buddy. Assuming he may have just been waiting for a moment to get back into traffic. The last thing I remember no, was you need to talk to me when I get downtown in the area going about its business until my eyes finally chose to flutter shut and send me into a blissful sleep. I wake up once the car hits a large pothole in the road, causing me to whack my head on the what window you fairly hard. The first thing that alerted me to something being wrong was the fact that it was super dark out. When I entered the The first thing that alerted you was it being dark, not the license plate, not the fact that he didn't say hi, hello, you want some water, want a peppermint, want a napkin, or something. But when it got dark, okay. Uber, it was at least 3 p.m. It doesn't get dark this time of year till at least 4 or 5 at night. On top of that, the highway in which I didn't recognize was practically dead, which that in itself <laughs> was you're about to be. So I couldn't even begin to comprehend how long I had actually been out for. As I glanced out the window, I felt my heart sink into my now. stomach slightly. We were no longer inside the city. Instead, we were on a pitch black highway surrounded by dense forest. And I didn't live anywhere outside of the city. I quickly began to feel the tingling sensation of eyes on me. Causing me to turn my head to uh. the empty seat beside me. Except, it was no longer empty. It was nearly too dark to see, but I was able to make out the shape Ooh, of a no. dark, lanky figure seated mm -mm. beside me. The only part of his face were lit up by the dim dash lights. Mm -mm. His insanely wide eyes, staring at me intensely. The way he looked at me gave me a sense of complete and utter panic. I was in a situation that I never you thought could happen scared. to me. It was something that happened to other people, but never me. Do you happen to know if we're close to my destination? I questioned, trying to sound as calm as possible. Then the man beside me continued to stare at me longer than any sane person would be comfortable with. He has other plans for you. A new destination. Wait. We're almost there. I didn't ask for that. The man no. beside me stated in an unsettling tone. At this point, I was sure the man hadn't blinked a single time since I had woken up. The man's words quickly sent my already present panic into overdrive. The car was going nearly 100 miles per hour on the highway. In the middle of the night. My mind began to race as fast as the vehicle, grasping at any faint idea I could use to get me out of the car or out of the situation. If I jumped out of the vehicle and somehow didn't break any bones or end up dead... <laughs> you better, better tuck and roll, because you're done, buddy. They wouldn't easily find me on the road. Plus, I had no clue where I even was. I have to go to the bathroom. Can we maybe make a quick stop? I said. The two men simply stayed quiet. Practically ignoring my question. They some rude It would hardly seem as though they had even heard me at all. The others will welcome you once he is done. He 
will welcome you. The man in the front seat finally spoke deeply, the vibrato and the intent in his voice shaking me to the core. That moment, a single vehicle finally drove past us. The light that filled the car was enough to help me see my surroundings better, giving me a moment to get a more clear look at the second passenger. The man beside me had yeah. fresh stitches all over his face. His top eyelids were stuck open, making his constant wide eyes more under- He been beating people ass, and you next, buddy. Mandible, but no less unsettling. His entire face was almost like some sick sewing project. Almost reminiscent of Frankenstein, but confined to the head rather than the entire body. You came to us for a reason. You will be pleased to make you like me. Like us. I don't the man want beside that, me though. said, beginning to stroke my hair and touch the features Why are you of my touching face. Me? I began to shake under the stranger's touch, as well as his words. His fingers were rough and disconcertingly Why the fuck is you dry. touching me? The sound of sirens from behind us let an overbearing rush of no damn puppy. Over me. But there was also an almost uncomfortable tension that fell upon the air. It felt as if something within the air was taut and ready to snap at any moment. As if the slightest provocation or wrong movement could cause it to blow. Do you folks know why I pulled you over? The police officer questioned once he reached the car. No, sir, I don't believe I do. He got a hair problem. In the driver's seat he said ruined. In a flat well, for starters, you were going nearly 50 over the speed limit. That, of course, isn't a huge deal, as it is the highway. And it's not very busy right now. But both of your headlights have burnt out, and that's way too dangerous for the road. I'm surprised I haven't caught you. It was so dark. The officer stated calmly. Tapping his fingers against the car as he stared into the dark vehicle. The moment his eyes made contact with my own, I tried as hard as possible to convey my fear. To slightly plead for help without aggravating the two men in some way. I thought I recognized you. There's a warrant out for your arrest. I'm afraid I'll have to take you in. The cop says sternly, singling me out. The men around me didn't seem to clue into the fact that he was talking to me. As I saw them both tense up at his words. The moment the police officer opened the passenger door beside me, I nearly began crying out in relief. But I refrained. The men behind me stayed uncomfortably mm -hmm. quiet as the cop locked the cuffs on me. The now overly acquainted sense of unease and panic continued to fuel me. The men beside me stayed uncomfortably quiet as the cop locked the cuffs on me. The now overly acquainted sense of unease mm -hmm. and panic continued to... The now overly acquainted sense of unease and panic continued to fill me as I felt the man's eyes bore into my back. It felt like at any moment my chance at freedom would be taken away. That they would be armed and shoot my savior, or even me. But they didn't either. Instead, they sat there within the car quietly, just staring at us in a horrific trance-like state. Even as the cop began to drive away, I somehow felt their cold and unnerving stares upon my skin. The air still thick with tension. And no matter I bet how you far in the head, they got, thinking like, their damn. Their car never moved so much as an inch, which made my feeling even more than so it. stressed than before. If that was even possible. How'd you know I needed help? I'm a cop. I could recognize the look in your eyes from a mile away. I see it daily. He stated. Within seconds, I began breaking down in tears. Every emotion suddenly overwhelmed me. The man didn't say another word the whole entire ride. He simply let me cry it out. He even offered to watch my house for the night in case they came back. As I had given them my address. I, of course, said yes, even though I didn't sleep a wink that night. I never came back. The thought sickens and terrifies me. Maybe they never even left that spot on the highway. If that hellish car had Bro, never... He got his outside clothes on in a bed. Mmm. He dirty. I gotten pulled over. I don't even want to know what would have happened. I wouldn't have got my chance to escape that horrible situation I'd found myself in. Be careful if you take an Uber or any other service like it. And no matter how tired you are, don't fall asleep in the vehicle. This man was a complete clown. How you going to sleep and the car that ain't got no plates and, and a guy who ain't talking to you? That's like two red flags within like 30 seconds. Are you serious? Like he's a complete doofus. And then got the nerve to cry once he got in the cop car. You fucked up when you got in there. Don't cry now because you scared and because you was scared. You did that to yourself. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the videos. That is it for today. Make sure you go check out the channels. If you guys have any suggestions on what you want me to react to next, whether it's funny, scary, or whatever, leave it down in the comment section below. Also leave the link if possible. Make sure to leave a like. 
comment and subscribe share the video don't be stingy guys don't be stingy and with that being said i'll see you in the next video i'm out